CataractCoach.com. Is a CTR needed for pseudo exfoliation? Or can you just do your routine cataract surgery technique? Now, this is a complete cataract case. Going to show it to you start to finish. You can see we're starting off with a good pairs and these here. Good draping. Got some toric marks on the cornea for the steep meridian. And look at all that pseudo exfoliation material. Now, this is the maximum pharmacologic dilation we could achieve. So we're putting in some more anesthetic here as well as some phenylephrine intracameral. Maybe you can get a little bit more pupil enlargement. Now, here comes the viscoelastic. You're going to do injection here, but also OSHA's technique, a little viscomedriasis. How you inject the viscoelastic and push at the pupil margin, you get a little bit more temporary medriasis. Now, let's make our phaco incision here. Of course, you know I like my diamond, so making a diamond incision here, that's a two millimeter keratome, so we're going to put that in. Get a nice, good single plane, good tunnel length, slightly enlarge it to about 2.2 or 2.4 millimeters, and now it's time for the rexus. Now, this is a very important step here because, watch, as we poke in, how much wrinkling is there to the capsule? Well, you know, not too much, actually. So if the very loose zonal support is present, then it's really hard for me to poke in with these forceps, which are not that sharp. But if the capsule is taut enough that I can poke in with the forceps, then it gives me a good idea about xylem integrity, which seems to be okay in this case. Now, you see my forceps are measured off at two and a half to five millimeters. I stop periodically to check to make sure we're getting the correct size rexus. I want about a five, there it is, to five and a half millimeter rexus. That looks just about perfect. And again, I can measure real time with my forceps. Now, how am I gonna remove the nucleus here? This patient has the normal axial length. Iowa power, let's say, is 20 diopters. So, you know, I like to get it slightly tilted out of the bag. If you're worried about zonal integrity, well, let's, let's not operate in the bag then. So I tilt the nucleus partially out of the bag. It's half in the bag, half out. And look how the pupil is holding the nucleus for me. A little extra aliquot of viscoelastic you saw going in there. Faco probe going in. Well, this is the pink sleeve, the smaller sleeve going in bevel down. Here comes a chopper in the side port. And buzz into this thing, and chopper gets behind it, and psh, right there, two halves done. Now, this first half, maybe we can chop it again into quarters. And we're trying to operate basically at the pupil margin, staying centrally there in the eye. You don't need to go all over the place. And you can see this is not too dense of a cataract, and we're able to use this phaco power modulations and high vacuum level to aspirate that first hemi-nucleus very efficiently. Now, here comes the second hemi-nucleus. Bring that up. Chopper goes around. Okay, chop it into quarters again. Each of these quarters can be easily aspirated. Taking that out nice and easily, again, makes very short work of that cataract. The nucleus comes out very efficiently. Now, it looks like getting out a little bit more of that lens of material. Maybe the rest, should we get that epinuclear shell up? Can we? Or should we go in with the IA probe? Let's see. Maybe we can grab a hold of it. There you go. Get it flipped over with the chopper. That's it. And now you can take that epinuclear shell down. A little tiny little piece here to take that out. Alrighty, now, did I tell you about retinarounds.com, our new sister channel, a new video every single day, I know you're gonna love it. It's meant for retina specialists, but also meant for cataract surgeons like me. I promise you will love it and learn a lot. Like the video from yesterday, where Steve Charles explained what we should do when we encounter vitreous as cataract surgeons. So, a lot of great material on there. It's stuff that even as a cataract surgeon, you're gonna wanna learn. Now, going in here, cortex removal. Now, notice carefully, the rexus edge does not move. If you're trying to take out the cortex and you pull the cortex and you see the edge of your rexus moving, oh, that's a bad sign. That means very bad zonal integrity in that one area. But here it looks pretty good. So let's put some viscoelastic in, cohesive agent, fill up the capsular bag, and let's do a little capsular polishing. Now, isopseudic exfoliation can be higher risk for capsular phimosis afterwards. And I think just cleaning out all that lens epithelial cell matter from the undersurface of the anterior rim may be a benefit. Certainly doesn't hurt. So go in here and we can clean all that stuff off. Beautiful. This patient's getting a monofocal lens here, a toric one. And this is an average eye, average axial length. Let's say the eye will power is about 20-ish. And so, you know what? I don't think you need a CTR. To answer your question that I posed at the very beginning of the video, do you need a CTR in every case of pseudo exfoliation? I say no. And I don't put one in routinely. Now, if I'm doing the case and I do notice there is zonal weakness, I think then there's an upside of putting in the CTR. Obviously, their focal area is on your loss. It can help support those areas. But also, if you have patients with um, contraction later and that phimosis, well, the CTR can help kind of balance that out here. So there's the IOL and the capsular bag. We'll go in with our IA probe, remove that viscoelastic. Important to get the viscoelastic from behind the optic. So the toric lens especially, you want that optic to sit directly on the posterior capsule. And this material is slightly tacky, so it'll kind of keep it in position. Now, you can see there are toric marks on the eye well, of course. 
And there are also torque marks we made here on the cornea. And all we got to do is line those two up. Now, by the way, look at the rexus size. Just about perfect, don't you think? It's about a five and a half millimeter rexus, nicely overlapping the optic for 360. At the end here, let's hydrate it up and seal that main incision. We can do some final IOL positioning if we need to. A little bit of air bubbles there. That's no big deal. Of course, those will resolve on their own. And now let's go in here through the side port and maybe adjust that final IOL position a little bit. Oh, IA probe. Okay, we'll go back with the IA probe. Maybe you want to get out those bubbles. You want to have a prettier view here. So again, taking out the viscoelastic, if there's any remaining, plus maybe getting out some of those little air bubbles that we forced in at the end there. Of course, the air bubbles are, of course, no in, uh, big deal. They'll resolve. And then we'll finish up this case. Looks like the torque lens pretty much on target. Maybe a little fine adjustment at the very end here, but beautiful. So again, pseudo exfoliation cases, no, I don't routinely put in a CTR. I don't think you need to. And hey, by the way, did I tell you, check out our podcast. The Counter Coach Podcast is the top podcast in all of ophthalmology, which will teach you how to be more successful ophthalmologist. I promise you will love it. Check it out. And also our sister channel, retinarounds.com. It is up and running and doing great.